Okay, so a spell attack mod is proficiency plus wisdom, apparently. And, yeah, I'm assuming it's d20 plus proficiency plus charisma. Okay, um, so... Uh, does this actually list proficiency, the monster thing? No, it doesn't. Uh, well, okay, basically I'll just roll. Um, two, uh, well, okay. Um, you see this sickly green ray of energy burst from deep within this hut. And by the way, I'll just move everyone over to the bar area because we're going to use that as the... Um, so... Okay. Yeah. I'm getting a bit confused with everyone's voices, so just tell me who's inside at the moment. Um, Shrog is the one that's inside. So, okay. Um, so Shrog is Reuben, bam, and you others are just outside. Um, yeah, so yeah, you see this ray of green lights just whiz past you and smack into the wall. And again, there's just this cry of frustration from deep inside the hut. And finally, um, we're going to have... Uh, no, nothing else happens. So, okay, we move on to whoever's next in the initiative order, which will be Cinder. All right. Good. Well, since he's still outside, he would sort of hear these shrieks and he would immediately kind of rush in and sort of look around and see what's going on. Well, the what door's been invest- slammed shut and locked. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um... Hmm. Well, are there any are there any windows on the outside of this building that yeah, he may are, be able to look at? There are two um windows with a simple um cross brace of branches in them. Perfect. So he sort of he goes over to one and he uh sort of looks in on the scene to get a gist of what's going on so they don't spring the trap on the rest of them. So okay. that would be Investigation? Um, looking through the window, you don't or see anything. Oh. Um, the, the back of the hovel is too dark. Uh, what race are you? Human. Yeah, okay, you can't see anything in the darkness. Oh, boy. Yep. <laughs> Towards the front of the hovel, it's more light. In the first three rows here, it's more light. But where you're looking through the window, the window is actually where Triel is. You can't see anything. Ah. Hmm. I don't believe there's anything I could do at this point. So he sort of just stays back and wonders how they can get in. Or well, yeah, you can find a- take an action to try and smash through the door or the window. Ah. Yeah. Um, just give me a strength, just- strength check if you'd like to try and barge through one of the either the door or the window. Yeah, sure. Might as well. Well, try and sort of break... Th- I guess break through the window, because it looks less sturdy than the, do- the door is. Yes, indeed. So, okay, make a strength check. Right. Offhandedly, just to note, someone mm. in the chat says that most monsters just tend to roll the spell DC. All oh, right. So, spell DC, uh-huh. just for reference, is 8 plus uh, bil- uh, spellcasting ability plus proficiency. Hmm? Uh, so, explain that again. Uh, spell DC is 8 plus spellcasting modifier... Plus proficiency. Anyway, go ahead. Right. Well, I'm a bit confused about that, so we'll try and figure it out. Anyway, um, so ah, you rolled a whiz saving throw. We need a strength check. No, that would so be mine from last time. Oh, okay. That would be the last time. Oh, right, right, so right. strength. So I'm getting confused now. So yeah, go still right. strength check. Yep. Okay. Uh, yes. So yeah, you just smash straight through the window. And uh, immediately see. Um, did that, yeah, okay. There is a horrendous smelling hag here with her hand on um, Ruben's shoulder. Hmm. She was right by the window, which is why you couldn't see her on the way in. Right. So, so it was your action to burst through the window. It was my action to burst through the window. So yeah. a bonus action could be possibly trying to catch her off guard with an offhand attack? Um, or I think usually an offhand attack is only used if you actually made an attack with your action. Oh. Yeah, but I'll me, say go for it. Yeah. Let me do a quick check. 
Why not? Actually, Why not? Yeah, just go ahead. I mean, you knew something was up. You were coming in there meaning to attack. So, yeah, roll on attack. Okay. It can be offhand, right? So. Yeah. Or Okay. Awesome. You hit um, for, uh, yeah, just six damage. It's You make a strike at the back of this hag who squeals as the blade punctures her skin and you see just this nasty ooze seep out of the wound as you make your slash. Okay, so uh, who's up next? Uh, unless you have anything else to do with your turn? You still have a bit uh, of movement. No, I think that's going to be it for now. Cool. Okay. Um, just to clarify for people coming up next, I'm going to say that you can make it through this window without provoking an attack of opportunity from um, this um, hag here. Who just, um, if you want to make a note by just like writing here, is Auntie Gweg. Uh, let's say this is Auntie Yeg. <laughs> so just give us a Y here. And Y. Yes. So um, let's deal with this damage. Okay. Cool. Um, so, okay, who's up next? It is uh, Triel. Okay, uh, Triel's going to follow in through the window. Uh, Go for and... it. Okay, uh, so she's going to follow in through the window and then make a short sword attack. Sure. anti Okay. Uh, yeah. You'll have to move into range. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, think of Sorry, something tired. To know too. Uh, I think that might constitute a sneak attack. Um, you were stealthed, and yeah. Yeah, go for it. Make it a uh, sneak attack. Okay, I'm not sure of the exact rules, but okay, since so you are a rogue, let's make it fun. Here's the rules for a sneak attack. Uh, if you have advantage on a creature that you hit, you can do it, but you can you all you don't need advantage if another enemy is within five feet of it, essentially. So for a sneak attack, roll your damage and then roll three d six alongside that damage. Mm. Okay, I think I understand. Yeah, so basically just roll an attack and then um, we'll add the extra damage. Afterwards. If you hit. Okay. Yeah. That is definitely a hit. Eight piercing damage was very nice. So, okay, use the dice roller on the top left hand tab thing to roll 3d6. Oh, sorry. That was That's fine. fine, yeah. Uh, plus nothing, right? Yes, it's just it's just yep. the 3D takes the level. Okay. Cool, okay, nice. 12 extra damage, so 20 damage, well. Um, Yeg screams and cries in pain, and uh, the illusion that was on her drops. She looked disgusting before, but now, as um, Auntie Yeg turns her face to you, you see the hag warts and mottled skin fade away. She has... A horrendous trout face with a mouth dripping bile, deep black eyes. Make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. That is that is not better. Fish face. Gross. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think you just make that. I can't find the actual thing, but um, that seems fine. Yeah, okay, yeah, you... Um, I'm going to say you make that. Um, this face is terrifying. You feel like um, you could be scared of this, but you're stronger than that. No hag is going to um, make you fear them, especially after the damage you just dealt, so no effect. Yes. So, okay, anything else you want to do with your turn? I think you get an um, extra attack, don't you? Still got one yes, more attack? Yes, so going for an extra attack. Yeah, the offhand. Okay, go for it. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, that definitely hits um, for an extra three damage. So, yeah, um, the true face of Auntie Yeg just bubbles and gurgles in front of you, mm -hmm. sickened by the damage that you have done. Cool. So we're on to Vasmir. Well, I hear a tussle going on through that window, so in we go. I'm going to actually take a step back. Because uh, everyone else is kind of surrounding her, so I just want to be prepared in case mm -hmm. someone else comes rushing. Sure. And now that I've done so, it's time for some more Radiant Sun. Yeah. Definitely hits for six Radiant Damage. Yeg is now just shrieking in pain. Okay, here comes another. Her hand is off Ruben's shoulder. Wow, yep. Yeah. Hits again. <laughs> Please die. Yeg seems almost to collapse, withdraws inside her robe, but stays upright, and just looks about in confusion, with eyes that you realize are blind. She's not seeing her surroundings. She's confused, angry. Yeah. All right. Okay. And I'm going to take pity on the hag with this last one, try to go for some non-lethal damage. Okay. Oh. Cool. So you're going to move in for the... Um... No, I, I misclicked. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Non-lethal sun damage. Okay. The last hit blows Auntie Yeg off her feet. She slumps to the ground in a puddle of bile and blood. And at this point, you hear voices from the end of the hut. Two voices. The first says, He didn't kill her. He left her alive. The other one says, she'll be dead soon enough unless we help her. Oof. Wait, wait, the first voice says. And you see the fire blaze up at the back of the hut. There are two other aunties back there. Oh, boy. Here and here. They almost killed Yeg. Weg. Yes, they did. Gweg. They say. These are Auntie Weg and Auntie Gweg. So, yep. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's By the fireplace. Bam. That's fine. <laughs> Mounted above the fireplace, you now see, is a painting. Gweg has her long fingers caressing the painting. You see her fingers end in sharp talons. She says to all of you, come no closer or I shall rend the fabric, the canvas. And you see the painting is of a person wearing a quilted waistcoat, screaming and apparently beating on the canvas. Well then, we have a hostage situation, huh? <laughs> you look around this hut and it is revolting. There are baskets of rat skulls, and whenever the aunties talk, the rat skulls chatter along with them. Okay. There's a cauldron bubbling near the entrance, which I can't be bothered to put in on the map. <laughs> and in the middle of the hut, you see something truly heartbreaking. There is a dog here. They have a pet dog. but um, And I should mention, along the sides of the huts, where the walls meet the roof, are a series of huts disembodied hearts pumping swamp water down the walls. There's another heart tied to the ceiling, but this one is connected to the dog by st a stitched length of skin. The dog is tethered to the ceiling, can't move more than like 10 feet, and it's just whimpering. It looks like a malnourished little um, mongrel. I find this ugly and disgusting, <laughs> but I can't do anything about it yet. So, Gweg and Weg, unseeing, just trying to listen for where you are, say, why do you come here? I'm revolted. I don't want to really say anything about this, so has anyone else got anything? We're here for I the kinda... stone that one took. Not particularly. I kind of gesture to everyone to, to stay quiet so they don't know where we are. So who said you're here for the stone? I did. Ruben did. He doesn't okay. care. <laughs> God damn so, it, Ruben. The other two of he you doesn't just care if they know where I am. 
Yep. The other two are <laughs> just being quiet. So Auntie Gweg, still caressing the painting, says, The stone. It's pretty. Beautiful. So we mean to break it. Oh. You can't have it. Okay. Um, it's my initiative order, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. Stab time. <laughs> okay. Rupert runs over to Greg. Um, uh, I'm going to go into a rage with a frenzy. Okay, go for it. Uh, so this is going to be neat. Um... I am also going to attack recklessly. <laughs> um, so see, my see first two attack, minutes left on the clock. Yeah, my first attack will be a strength roll um, using my rapier, um, and will have advantage. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Go for it. Oh no. Nope. <laughs> nope. Um. Greg hears you coming and just ducks. But it does make her um, talons come away from the painting. Uh, my second attack is going to be a dex attack, which will not have advantage. And unfortunately it does not hit. You try and hit and she just shifts out of the way. Um, and unfortunately I made my rage as a bonus action, so I can't use my bonus action melee attack from Frenzy this turn. Uh, so that's all she wrote. Okay, so that attack failed. I'm um, seeing him launch into battle like this. Um, what was the initiative for um, Gweg and Yang? I didn't make a proper note of it. Uh, I think uh, less 13, than mine. 13 and 9. Yep. Um, so, okay, seeing this, Gweg turns to you with a leer. And let's see... She, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. okay. Give me just a moment. Um, awesome. So, uh, Ruben, make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. And tell me your deepest fear. Um. Ooh. I don't think I've come up with the deepest fear for Ruben yet. Um. Well, whatever it is, it just emerged from the wall and grabbed you. You are terrified oh. and take 4d10 psychic damage. Ooh. Oof. The one thing you don't uh, have is... Oh, wait, hang on. That's a totem warrior. Never mind. You take 20 damage as, let's say, it's like a disgusting giant centipede that wraps its legs yeah. around you and bites into your neck. That's a good one. Only Reuben can see this. <laughs> And with that, it's 7 p.m. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we'll have to finish up there. Um, I'll have to cut it short. Yes. So, okay. Who knows what would Game happen? Game over. <laughs> we have failed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that I couldn't move it along quick enough. I actually thought it wouldn't have enough material to fill the two hours. So oh, you'd be it out too much. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Two hours can move slower than you think. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess yeah. we'll have to yeah pick this up on a t another week when uh, Kate yeah. isn't present, huh? Yeah, yeah. We yeah can some see. other off week. Yeah. We'll have to see uh, the eventual fate of our party. <laughs> As we all <laughs> die horribly. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, cool. yeah, we'll leave it there for the moment. We'll, yeah. We'll let you know next time uh, we're going to say hello to Auntie Gweg. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave you there. Yeah. So thanks everyone in chats. Thank you. Yeah. Have Take a care. have a good day, everyone. Or a good night or what the heck ever. Remember, say hello to Auntie Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Bye folks. Bye. Bye.